It's a brand new week and it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I feel ambivalent about that fact. Well, I feel... I'm, ex I'm actually ex excited to play. Uh, I'd kind of rather be using my time right now to take a nap. However, um, I work with someone who uses 20 words when one would do and repeats those 20 words a couple of times rather than just saying it once and speaks very loudly so it's difficult to escape that and occasionally I get really bad headaches as a result. There's only so many things you can say to a person uh, when their their nature is to speak a lot. So um, I'm going to try to be very brief with everything I say today. I know I'm very wordy as well you might be saying to yourself who are you to talk? You talk a lot. But that's what I do on these videos. I, I, I just kind of feel like I'm supposed to. Um, so you know what's going on. But I'm going to try to be very brief and to the point and not use a lot of words. I've already repeated myself though, so I'm going to try not to. Um, for a while now I've been really annoyed with the combat results table I've been using. I haven't really spent the time or the effort to come up with um, another solution. Today, uh, recently though, and this is a good way to come up with solutions for things. I was re I've been reading this book, uh, How We Came to Live Here, which is a role-playing game of sorts um, in the story game subgenre of role-playing games. And uh, I, I thought the, uh, the conflict resolution method in this I could maybe adapt to this game. It would be fun to try anyway, and it kind of plugs it into something else that I'm kind of getting interested in. Um, interesting, interesting book. I'll probably review that game sometime uh, after I've played it a few times. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain that when we have a conflict to resolve. But I, th I think it'll it'll allow for some more dynamics other than everyone on this side dies and a quarter or half of them on this side dies. I think that might be more fun. And we are going to be able to start off trying out the system. Melky here has started the Assassins. They're, pr they're kind of a specialized uh, empire. They really are true to their name. They get points for assassinating leaders, and any time they civilize, they can assassinate leaders. So he's not going to be looking so much at his map presence unless he thinks he can dominate Asia, which is difficult. They start off with not very much money. Um, he might just be able to sit in Alamut, which is where he's starting, and I think he's going to be able to get Alamut, though we will do the conflict resolution and find out. Um, and just assassinate, pick off people's leaders and get points that way. I think in order to assassinate, maybe he needs to be within range of them. I feel like that should should be in play. Or maybe have one of his leaders in their empire somewhere. That might be a good way to do it. Um, but so that will be kind of fun. Uh, he starts off with a free fort. He starts off with a, a nice setup number of only minus one, so he gets to start off with some knights. That's gonna that's gonna give him a big advantage here. So it's gonna be ten. Uh, there's two knights and a pikeman there. Uh, ten, twelve, to um, to two. Then I gotta figure out. I guess the defensive bonuses are just gonna go back to being defensive bonuses rather, or bonuses to strength rather than. Um, you know, uh, die roll modifiers. So I started to ramble on there, but I stopped myself and just stopped the camera. I'm going to think about what the numbers are and then tell you, and rather than have you listen to me think about it. I think that's important when striving for economy of line in interpersonal communication. Okay, first, both sides are going to be rolling dice. The yellow dice uh, that are from a German game I found at a thrift shop with stars on them are going to be Milky's dice. He has 12, Cowboy has 6. I'm just going to roll them all in here and then I'm going to sort them. So as you can see I have 5's and 6's here, 3's and 4's here, 1's and 2's here. These are all Milky's dice that he rolled. Um, these are worth plus, these are worth neutral, and these are worth minus. Um, making them analogous to fudge dice which have two sides of plus, two sides of nothing, and two sides of minus. Um, in this system, the pluses, or the fives and sixes, would be attack dice, the threes and fours, or nothings, would be neutral dice, and the ones and twos, whoops, would be minuses, um, which would make them defensive dice. Alright, so if we can see here, 
Milky's got a lot of it, a lot more of everything than Cowboy. Now, this book, being a role-playing game, uses character traits in combat. We don't really have those character traits. So how the how this game would work is you can um, check off traits on your character sheet in order to either change the result of one of your dice or to roll an extra die. So say if you need more dice to continue going. Because how it goes is there will be a flip, a back and forth with the dice where one person can use dice to attack basically um, and then the next person can try to defend. But it, but if you run out of dice you're kind of sunk. And then you get this, there's certain ways that particular dice will go into a victory pool. And then that victory pool will determine the outcome of the, the, the battle. Um, so I'm kind of going off the seat of my pants here, which I said I was going to try not to do. But I'm trying to be very succinct in doing so. Um, which I guess I've repeated that a number of times. Hey. So I had considered using the culture cards as sort of traits. They could flip cards to, to adjust the dice, but I don't think I'm going to do that. That's going to make... Um, uh, a person with a stronger culture just a lot more like almost unbeatable for someone like Melky and I don't want that to be the case I want I, but I still want Cowboy to get his benefit so I forgot to roll extra dice for the different science areas that he is better than Melky at um, so he's gonna roll three more dice right now and you can join me in that die roll all right six five and four so here's how this works. These are the hands of dice that the people have. Um, Milky gets to go first because he has more attack dice than uh, Cowboy here. He can push forward and attack, or you could decide to run away if he wants to, but there's really nowhere for him to go. Um, I guess he could go to somewhere else, but he gets points off of his homeland. Okay, so now Cowboy, he can either uh, counterattack by pushing this forward, or he can defend by pushing that forward, I think, or he can do nothing. Um, and I'm thinking about toying, since they don't have traits and I don't want to use the cards, I'm thinking about toying with using these neutral dice. You can discard two of these in order to um, get the effect of having a trait. Now normally when you're playing this game, this is all going to be take place um, just kind of within a narrative. So say if Milky were attacking, he could actually be like, trying to convince Cowboy to do something. It's not necessarily a physical attack. But if he was attacking, he would have to describe what he was doing. Um, whatever. Uh, it, attacks work, you know, it, although it's using the words attack and defense, it's um, not necessarily fighting. In this case, it is, however. Um, so Cowboy is going to counterattack with this. I think that means he has to give Milky a, a die in his victory pool. Um, I will check on that one moment. Yes, so Cowboy is going to have to give him a die, and now he has to re react to this attack. He is going to just defend it, which means he just gives Cowboy a die there, and then it's going to be, I guess that just makes it Cowboy's turn. Cowboy is going to use these two and run away. So now we have these victory pools, and the conflict is over. What do we do with them? Well. In the game, you can do a lot of different things with your uh, victory pools. We're going to have to change it for this game, though, because we don't have these traits and these narrative things. There are some things that are in that book, though. Um, that book says if you spend three victory pool, pool points, you can get rid of one of their artifacts. Um, you can also get rid of some of their victory pool. You can do that. You can give them traits and whatnot. The artifact thing is, you know directly comparable. I think, hmm, you can get rid of units, right? You can cause casualties to the other person. I think that would make sense. I don't think that Milky necessarily wants to do that, but he wants to prevent casualties on his own. Milky gets to go first since he has three dice in his victory pool. So he's going to remove a die and remove one from Cowboy. So Cowboy has no victory pool. Melky is going to take no casualties. He then has two more points from his victory pool. He could either, let's say you can use two points, two dice to take a card from their hand. You can also use it to take money on a one-for-one -one basis. So he could take two dollars from Cowboy. Um, what else could he do? 
I think that's that's probably about it. Oh yeah, I think he could get rid of cards. So based on the age of the card, so if it's a era three card, he could get rid of an era three card if he had three dice, two card, two dice, you know, so on. So does he want to get rid of a card? I don't think so. I think he's just going to take some money from Cowboy here. And this, he's, so he'll go up two, and Cowboy will go down two. So I definitely like that system better. I like the rewards. Um, I'll, I'll probably have to make out a table for just what you can get with your victory dice in uh, this new new combat system. I think maybe for every two dice you can get rid of a card of a particular age. If you double that you can steal the card. I think that would be kind of interesting. Maybe even make that a lower amount to steal the card so we see more like cultural whatever. Um, I also think that I can use the system for trading. I did just have giraffe trade the old-fashioned way just by trading cards uh, just for time and that might be how I do it. Sometimes I use the system for something that seems bigger like I probably would have normally done it in that fight with cowboy. Uh, it's tough though because there is a, a real tangible benefit for playing it out with the, the whole rolling and everything. Maybe I'll figure out a shorthand so that I don't always have to go through that whole method for you know, a small or, or I guess a, a lopsided battle would be the case when I wouldn't necessarily want to take the time to do it. Um, we're maneuvering right now. The Finns spreading out over Europe. I think they might have the majority. I'm pretty sure they do. I think they're coming into their own. There's not a lot, no one really in their way right now. Um, still, not a lot of points there, but peace succinct. It's been a fairly conflict-free uh, maneuver phase. In fact, entirely. There, are, no one's attacked anyone. I haven't been able to use this new system. Um, Cowboy was going to attack Little Red, but then when he started to do some calculations and to see what Little Red actually had against him, Little Red produced this this turn. He decided to back down. Um, likewise, Little Red almost attacked Runt here, but decided, you know, the defender gets gets uh, the terrain bonus and that was enough to make him back down. In both cases the the would-be attackers, Cowboy in the one hand, Little Red in the other, uh, had weaker units. They had more units but weaker units and so that that was enough. I uh, saw a lot of action in the labyrinth. A lot of leaders went to the labyrinth. Um, t Cowboy was tied with Runt for a second until she she successfully scored twice on it. I changed my rule on the labyrinth. Whenever someone scores on the labyrinth they get a glory point gives a, uh, the leaders a little bit more weight. Gives makes them a little more um, a little more succinct. We're in the civilized phase, and a pestilence has just ripped from Shanxi down through Sichuan, uh, killed El Cid, which was one of the Cham leaders in Yunnan. Uh, sorry, Yunnan uh, went through Bengal into Hyderabad down through uh, Palava before getting stomped out um, here in Maharashtra. Pretty vicious. The the Taang are almost totally gone now. There's only one unit left. They lost their capital. That is going to be... That's a, that's a rough surprise on Little Red right now towards the end of the turn. There's nothing he can really do to uh, recuperate from that at this point. It's going to lose a point. Pretty potent civilized turn for Cowboy and all in all. Not only did he do that vicious maneuver, but he got William Wallace, a new leader, and he got a couple cities in his plains areas. He hasn't been doing a lot of civilized actions with his his Phoenicians, so it's good he's doing it. He got rid of the Great Wall in Japan and then built his own Great Wall here, because there can only be one of each artifact going. So, pretty productive for Cowboy. This will be a turn of big goodbyes, big empirical goodbyes. Uh, we're going to have to say goodbye to the Saxons there. Their bid for Britain was um, thrown back by the English, and so being kind of holed up here is not really uh, in anyone's best interest. So they're going to be going away. Goodbye, Saxons. The Javanese, Red's playing a uh, playing a little puckishly, and I don't blame her. It's a game. She should be having fun, but you know their their press on on Southeast Asia wasn't successful. She could play the build-up game with Little Red, but ultimately, eh, I don't know, she, she might have a chance. She has the better 
a better progress level, but he has a lot better resources. Um, maybe if the pestilence had gone through here instead, maybe she would have changed her mind on that. But Cowboy decided to go down there, uh, partially to, to help these guys out, and maybe felt just a touch bad. I don't just a touch bad about wiping Little Red out there. Um, so the Javanese are going to be going away, leaving Southeast Asia once more to Little Red. And finally, this is big. I even lost their their card because um, I started to do it, and then I realized I had to do the um, I had to do the civilized phase. I got, I got ahead of myself. I can't even remember what they're called, but flesh is mainstay. Uh, these people here, they're not the Phoenicians, they're the other ones. I always get them confused. There's the Phoenicians and the... Uh, I better look it up. This is going to drive me nuts. It's in this stack somewhere. That's right, the mighty Syracusans. Uh, Flesh's old, old empire. This is all their culture cards right here. These are going to be... these are worth dollars right now until I get some more money cycled back in. People haven't been spending money. The economy got out of whack before I figured out a way that to maybe fix it. Uh, it's my fault. I don't think about economy enough, I guess. Um, so this, my, this mighty Syracusians, they've been with us the whole game. They're, they're finally going away. Flesh is looking for a way out, a way to survive. Um, luckily, again, Cowboy didn't choose to progress with these guys with the, the trade action. That's given him a little bit more time, but how much more time, I don't know. I think Cowboy's people are a little bit distracted because they have all this space now to spread out. Uh, they don't necessarily need to worry so much about advancement, though they do like the points. Their happens haven't been going forward either. So we'll see what happens. Let's do some, let's do some scoring, and I'll clear things off so you can see what it looks like with, without uh, these, these empires that we've gotten so used to. And here is the world without them. Very naked. Two of the empires were actually pretty small. They didn't really do a lot. The Saxons and the Javanese, we don't miss a lot from them. I think um, a lot of pressure is off of Little Red. He was having to really worry about these people. Although they weren't such a huge threat, he did definitely have to defend this border here. Uh, when really he wants to just be thinking about money. He had to spend a bunch of money, which was which hurt his scoring potential. Um, so, scoring. Let's take a look. Flush is starting to catch Little Red. Little Red's losing points as a result of, of all the shenanigans there. Um, Runt's almost lapped Flush. She's pulling an 8 again because her, her lead here is giving her 2 points and the Egyptians are, are doing good. They maneuvered, gave them a lot of land. They're really just benefiting from lack of competition. It's the same story we're seeing lots of places, only her cont she's got a whole continent rather than a subcontinent or a region uh, to, to fill in. <coughs> Japanese are doing pretty good. They, um, they had second place for sea dominance, so they pulled in three. They got wheat. If they can, if they can puncture these areas here, they can be a big scorer. Um, if he has time to get them going, they could be a, a real, real force in the game. But you know, as we've said time and time again, and I won't, I won't say it again, but I will say it again. Time's running out. Early Finns have come into their own. They have the lead in Europe, almost lead of the world. If it wasn't for the Egyptians, they would have had the most. So they're scoring two, which is good for them. Assassins bringing in one. English doing great. They had the most money. Um, let's see what else over here. Cowboy did awesome. Phoenicians got their full points. So did Plains Americans in the Han. You know, they have China and uh, their homeland. So that's that was five plus four is nine points just off of his empires, which is really good. He doesn't even have any, like, real incredible empires either. Uh, he's benefiting from lack of competition in two areas, or one of his competition getting beaten back down. And then just an old empire that happened to have the upper hand because the Syracusians went away. That's that's the main... He got two points off of that. Um, the C dominance is, is a very shaky, shaky point to score on. But as long as he has it, he gets two points. If he loses it, then he doesn't. Um, Giraffe's doing about the same as before, and Little Red did poorly. So that's what things are looking like. Um, we'll see what things look like next time on The Real People Mall.